cool, Farmer Jesse here. Special video for you today. Uh, in my last video, the harvest video, I talked about some improvements we've made to the root washing station. Um, those improvements were helped by my buddy David Ladner, who is going to join me today to talk about them. Uh, we're going to kind of break out, break down this whole washing station, uh, including the foot pedal and all of the things. Um, it's going to be really detailed. We're keeping it open sourced. We could have like made a kit out of this or something, but it's not really our style. How no-till growers rolls is we give as absolutely as much stuff away as possible. So this is one of those occasions. Uh, the first part of the video is going to be talking about kind of why, why we went this direction and how like it's saved us an enormous amount of time. I think it's cut our root washing in half. Um, and the latter half is going to be kind of the details of how it's put together and all of the kind of intricate little things that you need to know. We're gonna put all the details in the show notes too so that you can find all the pieces and parts if you wanna to put to, together one for yourself or if you want to kind of customize it, make it fit for your system. Yeah, in true no-till growers fashion, this is totally open source. So uh, we hope you appreciate that if you do, Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the channel. You can support us at notillgrowers.com slash support. You can go to the Patreon page, patreon.com slash notillgrowers. Uh, you can also pick up a copy of my book, The Living Soil Handbook, at notillgrowers.com. And if you just want to skip to the details, skip right to this time here. Um, otherwise, watch the whole video, enjoy it, and big thanks to my buddy David Ladner for joining me and designing this amazing setup. So let's do it. Okay, so a couple years ago, you came to our farm, to our other farm, and you helped us with the harvest. And at the time, we were doing like 200 bunches or so of carrots a, like a, a week. Um, but it meant that we were harvesting a lot of carrots and then spending basically the equal amount of time washing them. And I remember at the time you told me, like you felt like that was one of the big inefficiencies. Like, can you talk about what you saw sure. in them? Yeah, I came out to the farm. I wanted to help you harvest and uh, as an engineer, I kind of can't help but uh, think about optimizing a system, and uh, I kind of walked you through a cost roll-up, cost and labor, if you recall. I, I know that you had been talking on your videos about carrots being very profitable and being a great crop for you, but uh, I'd asked you if you'd actually crunched the numbers and done a cost roll-up. So um, I said, okay, what are all the costs that go into You gotta buy the seed, right? Do you have compost for your bed? And we broke it down by, I think, a 100-foot bed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you talked about how many bunches you could sell out of that 100-foot bed. So we were looking at getting down to what is the cost per bunch. You have your price, what's the cost, and then labor, right? And so that's how you really determine if something is profitable. So we walked you through the cost of the seeds. How much time does it take to actually sow them? And then how much time to harvest? And we got to the washing station and by and large, by huge margin, that was where you spent most of your time. And labor is probably the most expensive, yep. and that's the most expensive in manufacturing, most expensive uh, anywhere. So um, in engineering or any problem solving, uh, let's say you're trying to take cost out or take time out, you really want to attack the biggest chunks. You know, they call it a Pareto chart, where you rank, uh, rank everything by their size or their impact to the system. And so, um, if you're trying to take time out, you don't want to take five seconds out of ten seconds, right? You want to you want to take uh, a minute out of an hour, right? Mm. You, you want to attack the biggest chunks. So um, the wash station being the largest chunk, I said, how can how can we optimize this? And what I saw is you had uh, your sprayer in one hand, your vegetable in the other, and you kept having to spray, put it down, move, pick up pick up the sprayer again and it was like you know it would be really great if you could do that hands-free you could have two bunches or or maybe you could just move it faster and so that was kind of the the thing I wanted to help you optimize in the system because that was the biggest contributor to your cost right and I, I brought this over here so we could sort of look at it because one of the things is it's not just getting the dirt off but you're also like sometimes having to pick out a bad leaf or two or like a dead leaf or a bug or whatever it is sure. And so it's hard to do something like that when you have, you know, your sprayer in one hand and you're like trying to pick that off. Or like you said, you have to put it down and start picking off the leaves. Um, and then you have to hook this. Sometimes it falls off the ground, off onto the ground. So yeah, that was like a, that was definitely when you pointed out a huge labor right. loss for us. Okay, so that was the problem. 
talk a little bit about the solution. Sure. So the problem was was time. This was definitely a bottleneck in your process. It was uh, your biggest cost, if you will, that's hurting your profitability. And so, um, how do we speed that up? Well, you got to get the sprayer out of your hands, right? So maybe uh, something overhead or some some kind of sprayer that's mounted, and then now something where you don't have to reach down and pick it up. Maybe you have a pedal uh, that you could step on with your foot. And so that's kind of what led to what we have today, which is uh, a sprayer mounted. It could be overhead, it could be out in front of you, and then a pedal on the ground that operates the water. You don't want to leave the water going full time. It's wasteful. Um, if you recall at your old farm, you know, you kind of had uh, a water problem as it was, so we didn't want to keep that running even longer uh, and, and muck up the ground. So we wanted something that could turn on and turn off, and then, um, be able to use both hands. So, okay, so let's start with the pedal. Talk a little bit about this sure. and how it all fits in together. So for your system, we wanted to find something that was simple, that we could do a proof of concept, and we also wanted to find something that was commercially available, like online. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, but there wasn't you know, anything online, really. Well, like, there wasn't anything that was already prefab. There was of. not a kit dedicated to farmers or something that really marketed to farmers. But, um, you know, in hospitals, they have pedals on the floor. Um, in manufacturing situations, they use pedals all the time so that people can, be hand, um, can use both their hands in the process. Uh, so I knew it had to be something that was out there. So we went, I went looking and found uh, this pedal on Amazon. It's uh, basically, if you want to search, uh, you're looking for foot pedal valve or um, foot pedal water valve you know th those words will those keywords will get you to what uh, we found right and we'll put a specific link in the show notes for that sure. one this is available on Amazon it's a simple uh, foot pedal that you can step on it's going to open a valve and then it's spring loaded so that it closes when you take your foot off you can demo that too I think it's turned on yeah so this this uh, pedal valve is available on Amazon. Like you said, we can put up the link. I think it's uh, around $25. It's got a uh, two NPT fittings. And so what we had to do is get an adapter from GHT, Garden Hose Thread, okay. to NPT. And you want to get um, an adapter that has a swivel, uh, kind of like a union. That allows you to... So you don't have to spin the hose to get it so you to link in there. Hose, exactly. Yeah. And so then uh, I like to use PEX. I had some PEX from when I uh, plumbed my house. And so I got a PEX fitting and um, a crimp ring. And for people that don't know, PEX is just the type of pipe. Yep. It's cross-linked polyethylene. That's what PEX stands for, polyethylene cross-linked. Okay. So it's really strong. Um, it's very cost-effective and it's available. You have to get a tool to... to yes. Okay. So I had the tool. Um, I do have that tool that, that we can show. And um, so you need a fitting that goes to the PEX, run the PEX up, another PEX fitting with a 90 degree. Um, you know, we could have brought this out farther with some different uh, fittings. And I think we may eventually bring it out probably about eight or 10 inches. So sure. just because you end up wanting to wash barrels and stuff underneath right. there or like harvest bins, and it'd be nice to have it a little bit further out. Sure. I wanted to get a fan uh, spray of water, kind of like a wall of water, so when you put the vegetable in and out, it would um, wash it, kind of like those Dyson blades in the right. bathroom, yeah. except with water. Uh, we didn't want it too wide, because that would be wasteful. Um, we didn't want too much uh, flow rate, because that would um, also be wasteful, but uh, one thing that we haven't mentioned is water management on the ground. Right, so if, if you don't have um, some type of uh, drainage tile to get the water away, you could have mud issues that develop at your wash station. So yeah, that's, that's what happened on our other farm. Sure. Yeah. So we can talk about uh, the flow rate. This is approximately uh, two gallons per minute at 40 psi, uh, which is pretty standard for a uh, garden hose. Um, I recommend that or lower, um, and then. You know, a lot of people talk about pressure, but really what you're seeing is the water velocity. The bigger the opening size in the nozzle, the more is going to come out, but the slower the velocity of water and the less it will actually push away the right. dirt. So you want that high velocity 
which is going to be caused by um, not only good pressure, but a small opening size right. in the nozzle. Uh, you mentioned having drainage tile or something like that. What about people who are in more arid conditions, need to preserve their water, want to preserve their water, uh, and maybe recycle it? Absolutely. Like, what kind of options do you think people could do? Because for us, we have a drain going underneath here and pushing it away because we have way too much water on sure. this property. Um, but for people who need to or want to preserve their water, what's like, what are some options you think? Sure, you could easily have a catchment uh, system, whether you're catching it and then funneling it over to a tank or whether the tank is just right below you and then uh, you could pump it or carry it um, with a spigot and bucket somewhere else. But yeah, I right. think that's a great idea to reuse that water. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of sediment and, and dirt in it that you're going to may need to filter out if you're running it through a pump. Yeah, 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 and it keeps it pretty concentrated that fan, so you're not you're not spraying too much out here, too far out there. So having a basin right. of some sort right underneath it, I don't think that would be that difficult. We first um, started out with a nozzle that has a deflector on it, so the water was coming out, hitting the deflector, and coming down and that was just spraying all over you. And so what we ended up And it doing, also wasn't tight enough. It wasn't tight enough. Yeah. I couldn't find one of those deflector nozzles with the tight enough opening or small enough opening. So we went with a 90 degree angle and then a straight nozzle. Yeah. And this one has a smaller op uh, opening. It has a, a V cut in the nozzle so that as the water uh, comes out, it's really creating that fan of spray. Yeah. So for the project uh, with the MPT fittings, you will need uh, a pair of crescent wrenches uh, or a pair of channel locks. If you're using uh, PEX, you will need to get the PEX crimp rings and the crimp tool. This goes right in here, and then as you crimp it, it tightens this around the PEX. You also need Teflon tape. You wrap it around clockwise. One challenge with MPT fittings is that they are an interference fit and it's not a repeatable interference. So each time you tighten a different fitting, it may turn to a different place. So you need to know ahead of time where you, you want that fitting to stop, right? And so sometimes you tighten it past the point and your only option is to go all the way around to the next one. So one thing that helps with that is make sure you have a couple of good layers of uh, Teflon tape so that you could potentially stop uh, before it's a little bit shy of it a being little bit tight. shy of being uh, yeah. really tight. And of course, like there's so many options with this. You could modify this in so many ways. I was just thinking like instead of just having this spray, you know, have that fan spray, you could have a, a valve here that switches over to this. And then you have another one that maybe comes out further and you can wash Absolutely. bins or barrels, uh, you know, any, any of your harvest bins. Um, what what about some others like what other thoughts this, do you have in terms of you know this is a prototype we wanted to get a proof of concept see how much it benefited you see uh what worked and didn't um so there could be uh, improvements changes that we see in the coming year as you use it um you know we talked about it possibly coming overhead and then spraying down away from you uh, you obviously don't want to get soaked during the process um, right, that could be improved too in terms of like, I, I wear my Grundens when I use this because it's inevitable that when you're hitting a beat, it's going to, or a carrot or whatever, it's going to reflect sure. back onto you. Sure. And we're really interested in seeing how people modify it and come up with uh, iterations of it and what ideas they have. Yeah, that's part, I mean, that's partly why we wanted to keep it open source and just see what people do with it. It's a cool idea and uh, yeah, thanks David. Absolutely. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that content. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and also let us know in the comments if you want perhaps David to come back and do some more modifications or do some more designs. Uh, if you have any ideas for things that you would like improvement on, let us know. Um, it'd be great to have David do more of these. Uh, he's an engineer, he's really good at it. Uh, he understands small scale farming. So I really appreciate, huge shout out to David. Um, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week. All right, bye. Having an engineer on your farm is incredibly <laughs> valuable. Yeah, I, uh, I enjoy helping you uh, improve your systems and, and be as successful as you can be.